Okay, so we'll pick up uh, where we left off on, on Wednesday's lecture. Uh, we were talking about Green's functions. And in particular, we were talking about the following one dimensional boundary value problem. It's just an ordinary differential equation with Dirichlet boundary conditions. Okay. So this could come about as a steady state of a, um, a forced heat equation, for example. And we found that um, after a bit of work that u of x can be expressed like the integral uh, of the inhomogeneity against a Green's function, okay? Where the Green's function here is piecewise continuous, it's, piece, it's piecewise um, uh, C, C2, so um, y less than or equal to x, this is what's true, so I'll say for y greater than or equal to zero, and x times minus y when y lives between x and one, okay? And we get this sort of um, leaning tent shape to it, here, where this is x, this is the, let's say the y-axis, one zero here, and uh, this is our g x y right. So I'm plotting is it a function of, of y, but you know it's a function of two two variables there. Okay. Now a few remarks about g g of x y it defines an integral operator right straight away. You see that this here is an integral operation on f, right? And so let's call this operator um, cursive G here. It takes, let's say, C infinity, uh, sorry, not just, just continuous functions defined on zero, one, and maps them to the space X, which would be comprised of functions that are continuous, okay? And they also satisfy these boundary conditions, right? Because uh, we make sure of it, right? It's 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 tacked down um, at the left and right hand sides here, okay, to zero. So note, we can um, restrict. Uh, sorry, before I say that, let me say that G is the inverse of our linear operator, right? So L is equal to minus D2 DX squared, which is a nice Sturm Lubel operator that maps, uh, let's say it would be C2 functions, okay, to continuous functions, okay? We should have a a C2 up here, okay, so that we can differentiate it twice. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that, yeah, we're defining G acting on F as this integral of G, X, Y, F of Y, DY, okay. Note, we're going to uh, restrict the domain of L to a subspace of x, okay, with differentiable functions here, okay. So um, what's our uh, terminology here? So g of x, so regular g of x, is not an integral operator. This is what we actually call the Green's function, okay? And in particular, it's the Green's function for minus u prime prime equals f, u of zero equals u one equals 
zero, right? And for our Green's function, we always want to know these boundary conditions, right? So the boundary conditions are included in this definition, okay? So that's our Green's function. What are some properties of the Green's function? Well, it takes as its argument x and y here, and it returns a real number, okay? First of all, as we showed, that tent function, it's non-negative. It's symmetric also. Okay. And so in order to see this, right, if we look back at our definition of the function, if I swap X and Y here, right, I get a Y here and an X here, and I would get a Y is less than or equal to X, which is what I have here, right? So I've got a nice symmetric function there. And I do know that it is uh, continuous in X and Y. Okay. But once we get into differentiability, right, it's differentiable, okay, except at where? Well, the kind of place we would think these sort of fundamental solutions would uh, have singularities where x equals y, okay? And so if I compute dg dy at x equals y, right, I get a jump here, okay? And so this is equal to um, the limit as um, x goes to y from above, okay? Of dg dy minus the limit as x goes to y from below of uh, dg dy, okay? So the jump, okay, in dg dy at um, x equals y is minus one, right? So we have this, this kink here, right? And so this corresponds to this dropping down to here. So if I was to plot, right, this is my g of x, y, if I was to plot dg dy here, so that is going to be equal to one minus x whenever y is less than x, and it's gonna be equal to um, minus x whenever y is greater than x, okay? So that um, if we plug in the limits, right? The limit as uh, x goes to y from below, okay? Or the limits as, as y goes to x from below. I could also compute it that way. Then we end up with, um, one minus y, okay, or sorry, one minus x basically on one side and minus x on another, okay? And so the jump is gonna be of size minus one in that case, right? So we have dg dy goes from here down to here, right? And so, um, this here is one minus X, and this here is minus X, okay? And this is Y, 
And this is y equals x prime right here. Okay, so uh, fine. So it's got to jump discontinuity. Okay. These kind of properties are pretty common with Green's functions, and they actually have counterparts for other differential operators L. Um, also note that we can even take a second derivative of G with respect to Y, and that's going to equal zero, of course, except where X is equal to Y. Okay. And so D minus D two G dy squared, right? You can tell if there's a jump discontinuity in a function. If I differentiate it again, what should I get but a delta distribution, okay? Where delta of x is the Dirac um, delta function or distribution, okay? We'll sort of carefully uh, handle that you know, when we talk about test functions and distributions. But remember, we've talked about delta of x before. Um, it's uh, assigns zero mass everywhere, but x equals zero, where it has unit mass. Okay, sometimes this is called a generalized function. So 